Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, dear friends. Good morning, Father. It's uh, a blessing to see all of you here. Did you have a good Christmas? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We hope and pray that you will have a very, very blessed new year as well. So may the blessings of the Lord always be with you, strengthen you, and protect you. And during this year, may the Lord always keep a smile on your face. So don't forget to smile in God's presence. So may the Lord always keep a smile on your face. May the Lord always provide you enough. Um, my blessing will never be that the Lord provides you excesses. Let the Lord provide you enough. When we have excesses, we tend to forget God. So don't ask for excesses. Just ask for enough. Because that's the prayer we have when we pray the Our Father. Give us this day our daily bread. We, Jesus taught us only one prayer. And that prayer, he said, give us this day our daily bread. That is how we ask. We don't say, give us this day our yearly bread. No? He doesn't even ask, tell us to ask for the year. Just enough for the day. So whatever we need, enough. Enough strength for our bodies to get through the day. Enough of, um, enough of intellect to be able to get through our work. Enough of emotions to be able to get through the struggles of family life. Enough of patience to be able to get through your marriages. So uh, all to get enough so that there will be food on your table. Let there be enough food on your table. Let there not be excesses on your table. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you might think, but I need a bit of excess. I want that cushion. Don't have that little cushion for yourself. When you have the cushion for yourself, you will lean on to the cushion and get stuck with the cushion. When you do not have that cushion, then you will trust in God. So that's my prayer for you. If, uh, if you're a person who takes lottery tickets, do you have lotteries here in Sri Lanka? Yeah. If you're a person who takes lottery tickets, I pray that that lottery ticket will never win. It is meant for lazy people. Lottery tickets? No, I don't want it. This is like we were, <laughs> we were building our retreat center in, in Sydney. And, uh, and one of our team members, very passionate, but said, Father, we will get in touch with, uh, you know, uh, someone who is working in, the, in one of the gambling places one of the high tops, you know, they are, they are really right there. We'll try and get in touch with them and they do a lot of charity as well. So, so they'll be able to give us a substantial amount for our retreat center. And at that time, for our retreat center, we had nothing. We didn't have a place. We didn't have anything in our bank account. And they said, Father, we'll be able to try and get through to one of the top people. And then if they agree, we will be able to get the, uh, a good amount of finances. I said, no, thank you. We don't want it. On someone's tears and sadness, we don't want to build anything that's supposed to heal. So um, we said, don't, don't do it. <coughs> and the same way, lottery ticket, don't worry. From the sweat of our brow, let us be able to work. So uh, let your lottery tickets not work. A person once came to me with a purse, a wallet, and came to me and asked me, Father, please bless I've blessed many things, you know, so um, there have been people who have asked me to bless the phone, not like how you bring. You people bring photographs in the phone, right? And then you scroll through it. But uh, there's a person who bought a new phone, came and gave it to me and said, Father, please bless it that I might never misuse it. And that's pretty good, pretty decent. In today's time, it's good. You're gifting your children uh, a phone, then first take them to the priest in front of them, ask the priest to bless the phone so that my children don't misuse it. Nowadays, that is what you need to bless. So, um, uh, so I blessed many things, but this person came with a wallet and came and told me, Father, please bless that there will always be lots inside this. 
first of all if there is lots inside it it leads to a problem where the the alignment in our backbone has a problem you know when you sit and one side is heavy because it's so filled so let it be empty so that the alignment is okay and you don't have a back problem so um so he gave me the um, wallet and said father can you bless so that they will all be be i said you know nowadays nobody walks around with cash it's all in the card so he said yes my card is also there so so you bless i said what else is there he said there's one lottery ticket also <laughs> i said i'm not blessing any of those things so um let god give us enough don't worry let's god god give us enough so that we never forget the lord so that will be my prayer for you that you will always have enough on your table praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. this month the church celebrates the holy name of jesus so the the church celebrates the whole of january is meant for the holy name of jesus for us to understand the significance and relevance um from january now what we are going to do is we are going to have the devotions for the one day retreats so the fir- friday is the first friday it is meant for the sacred heart of jesus we had the sinala retreat the other day um the first saturday is meant for the immaculate heart of mary and we had the tamil retreat yesterday the first sunday is meant for the holy trinity so it's the devotion to the holy trinity during the adoration we will pray that devotion as well and the special graces are always there in connection to a devotion so today's day is meant for the father the son and the holy spirit so for a moment just close your eyes pray and ask the holy trinity being here for this first sunday devotion of the holy trinity o father son and holy spirit you bless every prayer intention we have come here with if those intentions are healthy for me and my family bless us with an answer to that intention if these intentions are going to be dangerous for our families block it and let it not come to fruitful completion because holy trinity you know something that we do not and we trust in your wisdom and in your will amen 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 amen, amen. amen. so this month is the month of the holy uh, name of jesus our uh, names are very very significant names always very interesting as well um like i always say i love the sri lankan names you'll have some very very unique names and usually whenever i i have children who come and tell me their names i ask them for the meaning of their name uh because the meaning of the name there's a lot of significance connected to the meaning of a person's name there's a lot of history also connected to the me to a person's name but knowing the meaning of your name is very important how many of you know the meaning of your name can you raise your hands good at least you're more significant than the other two groups the other two groups been barely anyone knew it's important you know the meaning of your name now for some of us hard luck our name is a result of certain sounds so or it's a result of a combination you know the father's and the mother's name being combined together and then a new name is created so uh those names obviously will not have any meaning in it although if you are youngsters and you are a young couple and you are planning on having children when you have children please give them names with meaning instead of making a combination of your names first of all the combination is who they are it is seen in their face itself you don't have to put it into the name so you will have you know one part of your eyes one part of your nose one part of your face your cheeks something or the other is going to be there in those children so you don't have to put your name also into that okay so uh, if ever you are planning on having children you're young and you're planning on having children do give your children a name that has meaning 
And that is, that is in today's talk. We'll just understand how the holy name of Jesus is. But in between all this to understand how our names and the meaning of it can have significance as well. My name is Michael. Uh, Michael means who is against God. Not full stop, question mark. Okay, the whole tone changes. <laughs> so it is not who is against God. Michael, the chap who is against God. Not that way. Archangel Michael is the one who defends and therefore it is his question to the, the, the fallen angels who dare be against God. That is how the name of Michael is God. But I also have a name they call me at home and that is Vijay. Vijay basically in our language means victory. And so my, my, um, my baptismal name is Vijay Michael. So I'm very happy that at least it has a meaning. So uh, it's good to have meanings to, to your name. It adds a significance to it. Now, Jesus' name definitely has a meaning. And that is the reason why Jesus' name is powerful. When God sends an angel and tells the parents to name according to what his will is, that means there is a purpose in that. There is a significance to it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when it came to, when it came to John the Baptist, so in the family, when Zechariah was given the message from the angel, the angel tells Zechariah, you shall name him John. Now, according to the tradition in their family, no one was called as John. So it was very difficult for them, the, the extended family members, to understand why the name John. But the name John means Yahweh is gracious. So there is a meaning. Now, everyone in that community knows that Elizabeth is of old age and she's barren. She doesn't have a child. Now, whenever they look at John and they call John, they are reminded of what God did. God is gracious. So it has a meaning to it. Hallelujah. Any Johns over here? John? No Johns at all. Very good. Praise God. So I'm presuming most of your names are all combination names. You know, one combined two and three. So um, John's name basically is Yahweh is gracious. So everyone gets that testimony that Yahweh is gracious. Now, thank God, Mary and Joseph didn't decide to have or name Jesus with the combination names. You know, maybe, maybe then they would have ended up Jesus having the name as Majo. You know, Mary's M.A. and Joseph's J.O. combined together, Majo. So it wasn't left up to them. God didn't give them that choice. Though they were so honored, so blessed, so pure, so righteous, and yet they were not given the option of choosing the name. God sends the name and tells the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel tells Mary, you shall name him Jesus. The Hebrew word for Jesus comes as Jeshua. Jeshua, in another form of it is Joshua or Jehoshua. Those are the different forms of, of Jeshua. But Jeshua basically means Jehovah is salvation. Jehovah is salvation. And that is why when Prophet Simeon in Luke chapter 2 verse 30, when Prophet Simeon, you know Prophet Simeon, right? Yeah. In the Bible, when Prophet Simeon, as the Blessed Mother and Joseph enter in with Jesus, he looks, he takes the child and he says, I thank you, Lord, my eyes have beheld the salvation of God. That is who Jesus is. That is what the name itself means. So the name of Jesus has that significance that Jehovah is salvation. So Jesus' name has meaning and it has a purpose. When God gives a name, that means God is going to do something connected to that name. Praise the Lord. That is why in the scriptures we read about Abraham. You know Abraham? What was Abraham's name before? Abram. Abram was his name. 
Now, God sees or God comes across Abraham or God has a relationship with Abraham. The covenant with Abraham is in Genesis chapter 12 when God tells Abraham, you leave your country, you leave your kindred. And then he makes a promise. At that time, Abraham is 75 years old. When God makes a promise to him and says, you will have children like the stars in the sky or like the grains of sand on the, on the beach. Now, we in Sri Lanka know the beach better than anyone else. We know how many grains of sand are there on that beach. And God is telling a 75-year-old man, his wife is 65 years old, 10-year difference. So Sarah is 65, he's 75. 75 year old man is being told by God that you will get children like the grains of sand on the beach. How many of you are 75 and older? Can you raise your hands? Okay. Now if the Lord comes and tells you, I want to bless you with children as the grains of sand on the beach. I will give you 20 more. Most probably you will say the one you gave me itself is enough. And the 20 more is impossible. You will most probably point towards your neighbor who you fight with every day and tell the Lord, Lord, you know that person, very good to bring up children. <laughs> Now, God tells Abraham, you will change your name. From now, you will be called Abraham. So, Abraham becomes Abraham. Abraham means a father of a multitude. That is the meaning of the name. A father of a multitude. So, now, Abraham is going to go around and tell everyone don't call me Abraham anymore. You have to call me Abraham. Now everyone knows, this is a Hebrew word, so everyone knows the meaning of it. And they all know the meaning. A father of a multitude. How many children does he have? None. So this is at age 75. Now, okay, we can give one year. You know, in one year, maybe all will happen. 76, anything happened? Nothing happened. 77, anything happened? Nothing happened. 80. Anything happened? 85. Anything happened? Till that all this time, what is his name? Abraham. He's going to be the laughing stock. He's going to be telling everyone, my name is Abraham. How many children? No children. Father of a multitude. Now, this is not like the concept like when you look at us priests and say, you know, we are all your children. You have this Father's Day, right? You celebrate Father's Day. And very often we get messages, happy Father's Day. You are the spiritual father of all your children. Honestly, it's nonsense. Father's Day is for you people who have children. It's not for us. For us, we have priest days. That is different. Don't go and tell your father and try to make us feel very comfortable. Don't think that we are getting left out. We chose this. We are not feeling very bad that we don't have children because we are not getting wished on Father's Day. So uh, I don't know if you're... If you're parish priest likes it, please do it. But please don't do it to us. For me, I, I'm, that is not our day. That is not meant for us to be celebrated that day. It is meant for those fathers who need to be celebrated. I don't know if you people do it because I'm not a nun. I don't know any nuns over here. Nobody is there. I can't see any of the nuns here. So, um, oh yeah, there's a nun there. I don't know, sister, do you ever get on Mother's Day, do you ever get a message from them saying, Happy Mother's Day? Never. So for the nuns, you never send Happy Mother's Day. For the priest, you say Happy Father's Day. That makes no, no sense at all. So um, uh, anyways, so this man is walking around telling that he is, uh, he is, his name indicates that he's the father of a multitude. And it doesn't happen in 10 years. It doesn't happen in 20 years. When he's 100 is when it happens. He gets his first child. When it's, when it's 100, the, the child from the promise. So when God asks him to change the name, that means God intends to do something that's connected to that name. So there is a meaning to it. 
There is a purpose for it. Jacob, Jacob's name was changed. In the Old Testament, Jacob's name was changed by God to, to Israel, the one who strives with God. And in the end, when you look, the whole history of Israel in the scriptures is about them striving with God. It's the battle. Praise the Lord. Come into the New Testament. Simon or Simeon. Jesus looked at him and said, no longer will you be called Simon. You will be called Peter. Peter means rock or kephas. That also means rock. On this rock, I build my church. But he doesn't actually, it, it, the, the, the whole indication is, what am I going to do with this person? That name is indicating something. And therefore, with the name of Jesus, there is an indication. Yeah, Jehovah is salvation. There is an indication. Unless and until I know the significance and the meaning and the purpose of the name, and I'm reminding myself of it, I will never respect it. I will always be careless about it. Hallelujah. If I don't know the meaning of something, I will make blunders. When I was studying in school, I was in year seven and moving to year eight. At that time, I was, I was very tiny. I was, I was short. I'm still short. <laughs> um, but I was also puny. I was very thin. That I'm not. Now I'm healthy. So um, um, I was very, very short and very, very yeah, puny. So when we went into year eight, I was speaking to some of the kids these, these days and they were saying, uh, they're very cool about the exam. You know, year seven students, year eight students, very cool about the exam. So I said, you don't have to study. Okay, it's okay. Why? We will pass. Nowadays you have that, right? All the children pass. Till year 10, they all just keep passing and passing and passing. How, even if they don't write anything in the paper, they still pass. I wonder how that is possible. I hope I had studied during these days. You know, so I would have at least been much more at peace. So um, they say that they are they're passing. So there was, in, in our times, we failed exams. If you didn't write well, you failed your exam. You repeated the year. So when we went into year eight, there was, there was this student who had already failed three times in year eight. So he's already in the class. So that means his age is big, his height is big, and he was known to pick up fights in the school with everyone. So he was a person who was popular, as in popular by way of in all the wrong reasons. So when we walked into the class for the first time, so I don't know how you have it over here, but usually the year one classes are the same, the year two class, you're moving classes each year. You do that here also. Right? Okay. So we entered into the year eight classroom and he's already there. He's sitting there. First day of class is starting. He's sitting over there. First of all, he walks like this. Okay, so um, that itself is a threat. But he was sitting there right behind, you know, the back benches. You know what they are famous for, right? There's a reason why they're sitting right behind. So they find a lot of comfort sitting right behind. So he was sitting at that last bench and he's sitting over there. Now, in the school... Um, many of the students would call him, I didn't know his name initially, but many of the students would call him Gunda. You know what a, what a Gunda is? You know, a goon. But they called him in a Gujarati word. Gujarati is one of our languages. Now, I don't know Gujarati. So they used to term him Gunda in the Gujarati language. And I never knew what the meaning of that was. I actually thought it was his name. So when I entered into the class and he's sitting right behind, I looked at him and I said, hi, Gunda. <laughs> now, I didn't know the meaning of the name. The next thing I knew, I got a nice slap right across my face. He took me and he turned me over. So I realized there's a lot in the name. You know, uh, Shakespeare says, what's in the name? Oh, no, everything's in the name. <laughs> so... I, I realized because I didn't know the meaning of something so easily, I can say something that is, that is wrong, that is faulty. Now, if I do not understand the significance of the name of Jesus and that it has 
meaning and purpose and what is happening when I'm actually uttering the name of Jesus, then I will always lose the significance of it and I will lose the reverence for it. 